Hi everyone, Jeremy Simon here with 3D Universe. Today I wanted to give you a quick tutorial on doing some common maintenance. In this case we're going to be doing this on the FlashForge Creator Pro, but you'll find this to be pretty common amongst uh, similar printers that use these types of direct drive extruders. One of the most common things that you'll run into on printers of this type is you'll find uh, occasionally that it just isn't feeding the filament as well. Uh, you might notice this as under extrusion, uh, where it's just not putting out enough plastic. And part of the cause, or at least one of the more common causes for that, is that the, the hobbed bolt, the little geared uh, drive mechanism that actually feeds the filament through, can get sort of clogged up with plastic, and therefore it won't grip the filament as well. So it's a very simple and straightforward procedure to take that mechanism off, clean it out, and then put it back on the printer, and you'll find that it grips the filament much better after that. I'm going to show you how to do that today. Well, the only tool that you need for this is a 2.5 millimeter hex wrench. The, uh, the Creator Pro does come with that tool, um, but if you, can, uh, if you can get your hands on a ball-headed hex wrench, you probably can't see this here, but it has a, a slightly rounded tip to it in addition to, to having the hex shape. Uh, it makes it a lot easier in, in working with these printers because it allows you to have the, the tool at an angle of up to, uh, I think, about 20-25% and still be able to, to get a, uh, some good torque on it. So, uh, nice uh, ball-headed 2.5 millimeter hex wrench or the one that came with the printer. It's the only tool that you need. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. I've got the printer turned off. I've got the filament unloaded from the printer. And uh, we're going to go ahead and remove uh, two of these screws here. I'm going to bring in for a close-up to show you that. Okay, so all we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and remove these two uh, M3 type screws in the front here. One on the lower left and one on the lower right of the fan. I'm doing the right extruder in this case. The procedure would be exactly the same for the left extruder, of course. So all you have to do is pull them out partially until they feel loose. And then this whole front part with the fan and the uh, heat sink mechanism is going to slide right out. You got to make sure you have enough slack in your cables here. And that comes apart. And it's easiest if you try to keep this assembly together. Um, if not, you can, you can put it back when you're done. But what you have here is the, the fan, followed by a couple of plastic spacers, followed by this, this uh, metal heat sink. And uh, so if you have to, if it does fall apart or something, you just put it back together in the same order, just like that. And I'm, what I'm going to do is just kind of tuck these off to the side up top here and just sort of set them up there. And then on the back here of the extruder, of the stepper motor, there's a power cable. There's a power connector that we're going to pull off. And once that's removed, you can just slide this right out. Now, if you need to, you can also loosen uh, the two screws on top here, which will loosen this plate that holds these down. I find that I usually don't have to even loosen that. As you can see, I just slid it right out. But if you need to, you can loosen these two screws on top, and that will let you lift this plate up a little bit and give you some more room. So now we've taken the uh, stepper motor with the uh, extruder uh, components off, and we're going to go and uh, do a little further disassembly over on our work table. Okay, so here we have the uh, extruder assembly that we removed, and uh, again, using our 2.5 millimeter hex wrench, we're going to remove this screw in the upper corner on the spring-loaded arm here. And this is so that we can get access to that hobbed bolt. So we just take this off, and this comes off, and the spring will come out, and we'll put that back in when we're done. And there's a little uh, sleeve there that goes in that'll come out when you take that off. But that's it, just that one part comes off, and now we have open access to that little uh, hobbed bolt in there. And as you can see, it's not too bad in my case, but I can see there are some bits of plastic in there. So I use a, a couple of different tools. I use a, a fine wire brush to clean it out, um, and then I also have a sort of a, I guess it's like a dental pick, something that's got a really nice point that you can use to scrape out these, these individual channels. So I'll just use the wire brush first, give it a good overall cleaning. You can turn it with your, with your thumb as you go, so you can get all the way around it. And in this case, it's not caked in there too bad. I wouldn't even necessarily need to use that other tool. The brush is doing a fine job, but that won't always be the case. Um, when it gets really, sometimes it gets really gooped up in here and, and you'll have to, uh, again, get out something pointy. You can use something like this or even a, uh, 
uh, a straight edge razor blade can be used and you can just use the point to scrape out these channels and you can just go all the way around turning as you go um, but at this point mine is looking pretty clean and so uh, that's about all there is to it clean out those little grooves in there turn it around to make sure that it all looks good and now we're just going to put it back together exactly in reverse of what we did so we're going to take our spring-loaded arm put that little sleeve right back in the base there and then set the spring-loaded arm over that sleeve we're going to then put the screw in some people like to put the spring in first I find it easier to screw this back on and then put the spring in it's whatever's easiest for you so I screw that down not too tight you still want the arm to be able to move nicely and then we can insert the spring right at the end here and there we go now we have the spring-loaded arm back installed and we're ready to put this back onto the printer which again is just the reverse of what we did we're just going to reattach the power at the back slide it in place and and then use the two screws on the front of the heat of the uh, fan to uh, attach it back to the uh, to the printer so we'll go do that now okay so now we're ready to reattach the stepper motor and extruder uh, again I'm just going to slide it under here back into place and one of the uh, nice ways of making sure that you have this properly aligned. I'm going to go ahead and attach the power in the back. Of course my printer power is off while I'm doing this. One of the ways of making sure that this is aligned as you do this is you can take a, uh, uh, I like to use a straightened paper clip, something straight, and put it down so that it goes right through into the bottom it's going to it'll only go so far because our, uh, our our extruder is no longer heated and so it's hitting the filament in there but by doing this we make sure that that aligns the hole in the where the filament feeds through with the hole down here in the actual uh, the heated uh, the, the block in the hot end so we're going to go ahead now and reattach the fan and the power sink again if this happened to fall apart on you it goes back together just like you see here with the fan first then the two plastic spacers, and then the heat sink uh, with the fins facing outward, and then the two screws hold it all together. Those two screws go right in down here in the metal in the metal block. I'm going to go ahead and line those up now, and then using your 2.5 millimeter wrench, you can tighten these up. You'll want to do it partially on each side rather than tightening one side all the way. You'll find that makes it easier. And there we go. And that's about all there is to it. At this point, we've got our, uh, our extruder back in place, and we're ready to reload our filament, and uh, hopefully we'll have much better printing results after doing that. This is something you shouldn't have to do too often, but every now and then it's uh, definitely going to be helpful, especially if, like you said, you're having under-extrusion issues. This is the first thing you'd want to check. Hope this was helpful for all of you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.